he's made so many misjudgments in his career anyway. Mm. He's told MPs when he got there, because he was allowed to keep his phone for a couple of days, he's called some Tory MPs and he said, I think when I emerge from this, I'm probably going to be the most famous celebrity in Britain. <laughs> no, when he emerges from this, he's going to be humiliated and he will realise how reviled he is, the length and breadth of the land. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Jungle Confidential, the Mail's podcast and your place to hear all of this I'm a celeb gossip. Well, about last night, I don't know what to say. (laughs) So it's a good job I've got Andrew Pearce with me today. He's a jungle virgin. For the first time last night, he watched the show from start to finish. So he, along with 9.1 million others in Britain, watched Matt Hancock finally enter the jungle and it was every bit as entertaining as we'd hoped for. But the reaction from the creepy crawlies was nothing compared to how he was received by his campmates, was it, Andrew? It was fantastic. So Mike Tyndall, who must be a strong contender to win the crown, uh, just had to look the other way because he knew who this guy was. The look said it all. Utter total contempt um the sensible woman from coronation street sue cleaver sue cleaver uh interesting calling him very brave uh charlene white took on the journalist mantle as you'd expect her to what are you doing here parliament's still sitting uh and what was it he said parliament is stable at yes. the moment. what what he obviously doesn't even realize rishi sunat said his first <laughs> cabinet resignation after only 22 after two weeks two weeks and then he said and she pointed out well it's only been stable for five days it hasn't been stable for that long no, no it hasn't and, and actually he doesn't know like you say whether it's still, it's still stable now does it no because he's, he's, no, he's idea. no longer got his phone or, or computer i mean i wonder if he decided to go on i'm a celebrity after he was shunned by rishi sunak on the day he was made prime minister in that hilarious clip that was brilliant so there's all those tory mps outside tory hq and he typically matt hancock inveigles his way to the front of the uh, front of the row of mps and the, the prime minister pointedly clearly snubbed him and you could feel for matt hancock it was like a kick in the solar plexus do you know what i think happened he'd been talking to the jungle for weeks and weeks and when that happened he knew it's all over politically for him so he signed on the dotted line and made yet another mistake in a career littered with mistakes Mistakes, exactly i mean so charlene white actually took uh, i suppose a more grown-up yeah take on it boy george now, I think this is something that's going to run and run, isn't it, Andrew, through yeah. the next week or so, well, until either of them goes. Yeah. Boy you George, know. of course, would have thought he's the biggest big shot in the jungle. Mm-hmm. He's getting paid the most, half a million, I'm told. Is he got money problems? Because I know his house is up for sale near where I live in North London. You know I'm not one to gossip, but it is <laughs> no, up for not. sale. And so I, you do wonder if he needs the money. But he made that po- very pointed reference. He said, well, I'm very glad my mother didn't die, because mm-hmm. if she had of I'd have been out of here. So he's obviously had COVID issues. Lots of people have. Um, my own sister's funeral took place during COVID restrictions. There are only 30 of us there. Uh, so lots of people look at that man and think, it's you. It's you who imposed those swinging restrictions on us and then was caught in the act, groping his, his, um, his married lover. Yet another mistake. Yet another mistake, with his hand firmly uh, clasping her buttock, all filmed on the uh, security camera, which he hadn't noticed had been switched to a different direction because he's a bit of a plonker. And, and somebody despised him so much that they switched that camera they and then decided to leak the, the footage to a newspaper. So, the front you know, page of, yeah. and the video, if nobody's seen the video of Matt Hancock furtively stepping into that room where he groped his lover, you've got to watch it. It's like something... Remember my, Michael Jackson and Thriller? It's so awful. It's cringe making. I had to turn it off. It was so bad to think a minister of the crown could behave quite so badly and so furtively. And and so it's, look, I think we all had a little laugh last night. Didn't I had we? A there were some very there were some very funny moments, um, which we'll come on to. But I think you raised the point about people are sitting at home saying this is me, this man, Mm. this man, you know, caused upset to my family. I lost family members. Now, people have been criticising ITV for even having him on the telly. Now, I personally think it's a great signing. And obviously, given given the 9.1 million people that tuned in last night, he's clearly, you know, it's a coup for them. But do you think that perhaps there was any, any... 
decision by ITV that's perhaps a little bit off here. Look, people, if, they, if people are that offended by Matt Hancock being there, don't watch it. Mm. Uh, or if you're that offended by him being on it, do what I'm going to do. Vote him off at the earliest opportunity. Well, and, and, well actually, before that, people are voting for him to, to, do, take, the to, do, the, to do the Bush Tucker truck. Now, tonight, we're going to see him submerged in a water tank full of critters where he has to go underwater to get, get stars. Um, however, the air hole in the in the tank gets smaller and smaller mm. as the as the trial goes on so i think we're all going to see him tonight um, might he be struggling to breathe well i mean oh, no. I, I, in the clip i've seen ant and deck are certainly enjoying it and making making jokes about him being an air hole <laughs> yeah as opposed to an air head uh, <laughs> or uh, something else uh, well i mean i got into trouble on the telly other day for calling him a something head i now think i can call him a richard head because what i called him <laughs> on the tv um susanna reed had to apologize for i said you can apologize for calling him a... <laughs> we don't have swearing we here. don't have swearing here <laughs> but i was one of those who voted for him to do the bush trucker trial so i'm even going to download the app so that I know I don't miss any of the votes because I'm really, really engaged with this because um, I think Matt's made a spectacular misjudgment. He's made so many misjudgments in his career anyway. Mm. He's told MPs when he got there, because he was allowed to keep his phone for a couple of days, he's called some Tory MPs and he said, I think when I emerge from this, I'm probably going to be the most famous celebrity in Britain. <laughs> no, when he emerges from this, he's going to be humiliated and he will realise how reviled he is the length and breadth of the land. But, but you wonder, don't you, who, who gave him this advice to go there? Or do you not think he listens to people's advice? Well, he's a politician. He thinks he, he listens to his own advice. And mm. he deludes himself to think, what has he said? He want, you want to see the man from behind the podium. Yeah, the, the pandemic podium. The pandemic podium, yeah. Uh, and the man who was lecturing us every night to stay in and not to break the rules, and then we know was breaking the rules all the time himself. With his colleague. With his colleague. He's got a wife and kids. They didn't do, do too well out of that, of course. Uh, nor did her kids do too well out of that. No. I'm not being Victorian here. No, the marriages no, break up. No, absolutely. But you shouldn't. But if you are the Secretary of State for Health imposing the worst restrictions mm -hmm. on our movements since the Second World War, could you perhaps trying to bathe them yourself well indeed so so there were some cringe moments weren't yeah. there last night namely for me the embarrassing rendition of ed sheeran's uh, song perfect now how but, embarrassed but, must ed sheeran be that matt hancock is a big fan i think ed sheeran will probably sue <laughs> for his rendition of the song it, it was so oh, bad was so bad wasn't but, it but, but he thinks he's got a great voice. So I can tell you, a cup was it last year at the Tory conference? There was at the last night, as it always is, they have a karaoke party. Yeah. Now, there were pension secretaries, a woman called Therese Coffey. Hmm. Yes. Briefly deputy prime minister yep. in that brief trust Liz Truss's premiership. Liz friend, yeah. Yeah, who was the odd choice to be health secretary, which is very odd when you consider she has legs the size of tree trunks. <laughs> we do have an obesity crisis. <laughs> Andrew! But I said to her at this event, I left about seven or eight, she was clutching a glass of gin, which looked more like a bucket of gin or a vat of gin. I said, Secretary of State, do be careful later because... Press her here, and if you start singing, <laughs> she was the one who sang with Matt Hancock. Oh, did I'm you? having the time of my life. Whoops! Just half an hour before she started singing that song, the twenty-pound cut in people's universal credit had been signalled by which Secretary of State? Oh yes, Therese Coffey. So there they are, spelting these numbers out. Matt thinks he's got a great voice. He hasn't. He's very tone deaf, isn't he? Tone in, deaf in, completely. In, in every single way. <laughs> completely. Perhaps we should have got Therese Coffee in there too. It'd be good for a figure. <laughs> Sean Walsh, uh, another he, another love rat, by the uh, way. Yeah, Two caught, of them both went in together. Um, caught in Strictly. Caught in Strictly, yes. I mean, he's not been allowed Snogging to Snogging his that. dancer. No. That was in 2018, yeah. I think. I'd never heard of him until then. But now, I mean, now when someone said Sean Walsh is going, he said, oh, is that the one who snogged the dancer? I couldn't remember if he was a comedian or an actor or a singer. He, he's a comedian who snogged the dancer on Strictly. Yeah, yeah. Um, much to his then-girlfriend's disgust yeah. and upset. Um, so they arrived together, obviously. Sean Walsh spoke for us all, didn't he? I mean, he just he just found the whole thing I really know. funny. I know. And when they're, when they're in that tunnel doing that thing and Matt Hanks says, which way to go? He said, I'm not a sat-nav, you know. <laughs> in other words, do it yourself. I'm not helping you, mate. Uh, and, um, and and I absolutely do because they kept the suspense going, didn't they, mm. last night? You know, who's going to get the Bush Tucker trial? And it was down to Sean Walsh. Yeah, and him. And and I thought, Hancock, it's you. We all know it's you. He's going to get all of them. 
Well, I wonder, don't you? Like, when are people going to stop giving him no. the Bush Tucker Trust suit? Because they're not. They, but, but they don't. They're not going to want him to win. So. Does, it, does he go all the way to the final? Because no, we can't have want that. To stop the, no, we want, we want him humiliated early. We want him humiliated so he's out soon. So he realises how unpopular he is. Have you met ha- Matt Hancock? Well, many times. See, see, I met him once last Christmas and I found him really good company mm. and I found him quite funny. Uh, yeah, he's quite engaging. So I could see why he would actually, could potentially yeah. win over some of these some of his campmates. Yeah, but he, because he was talking to a journalist, so he, he likes, he's very conscious of his image, but I'm not so sure he'd be quite so good talking to um, people in, in the jungle because he's full of his own self-importance. Mm-hmm. He's a politician. Mm-hmm. Uh, bumptious is an understatement. Uh, and um, he won't be able to stop talking because he's a politician. And he mm-hmm. thinks if he talks a lot and he's going to show that warm side of his personality, which side is that then? Is that the left, the right, or the back? You know who his great friend is? Rob Rinder, Judge Rinder. Oh, really? They're I great. Didn't know so that. when he launched his Tory leadership contest, um, uh, tucked away in a, a group of people there was Rob Rinder, who looked horrified as I advanced upon him and said, <laughs> Hello, I didn't know you. You're a friend. Of... We go back to university and said, So, um, he'd be interesting. Maybe we should get him on this podcast. Say, we should get him on here, shouldn't we? You yeah. can come too, Andrew. Yeah. So, so um, young Owen, yeah. who is just hilarious. I'm yeah. like, he's just, I mean, he really is He's a sweetheart sure as well, isn't he? He is. He's not quite sure of what's going on in the world. No, he had no idea who no. he was, did no he? No <laughs> clue whatsoever. And didn't make any real attempt to conceal it, actually. Um, and, and Matt Hancock, of course, will have absolutely no idea who he is either. No, well, no, I doubt, no. D- I doubt Matt Hancock watches Hollyoaks, do no, you? No, no. And he won't know what an influencer is. He won't, that is not Matt Hancock's world. Now, of course, all we've heard from Matt Hancock and his team over the last couple of weeks is how he's going on there to show people the real him. You know, we don't, we don't see politicians. The British public don't see them. Another reason is because he's trying to um, up the ante for his dyslexia. Book. Oh, that one again. Now, now, I think I'm not the only journalist to receive, you know, on the record spokesperson's comments from his team saying that Matt is going on there to raise the awareness of this bill, which is being read in mm. Parliament a few days after the mm. show ends. So I'm sitting there yesterday, I think as was most of the Twitter Twitterati, waiting for yeah. this word dyslexia to be uttered. And, and I don't think we and heard it, did we? No, it no. didn't come once, Because did it? he forgot why he's there. Because <laughs> the, we know the real reason he's there is to raise his profile. And he wants the lolly. Absolutely. I mean, it is there. he's there for the one cuisine. I mean, straight away, I, even this dyslexia story line, line that he's, he's, he's punting us, you know, are ITV really going to edit out of 24 hours into one hour, Matt Hancock sitting there talking about his, his bid to get no, dyslexia it's, tested it, 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 It'll be fleetingly mentioned, if at all. They'd be under no illusion why he's there. He's got to this point now in his career. He's at a crossroads. It's over front, front bench wise. Nobody's mm-hmm. going to give him a job. So how can he restore his reputation? He thinks if he comes over, as funny, ha ha, and warm and lovely. He has a whole new world. But he's already signed up for this other reality show, isn't it? The SAS Who Dares Win. Or he's something? already filmed that for right. Channel Four. Right. Um, and within the contract, there was a clause that said he wasn't to participate in any similar reality series. However, he got that clause knocked out, and, and then and, and then S- a few weeks after. And Who Dares Win after, must be livid. They are Channel Four and the. Uh, yes, absolutely furious. They should but, drop him out of that. But, but actually, what it means is that he was filming that, I think, September time. Mm. He was back, and now he's away again. So, what, Does he ever do his job? He's actually been away from his constituency, you know, on and off, mm. from September to the beginning of December, yeah. and, and which is appalling, isn't it? Is it is appalling, but he's got a very safe seat. He's got a majority of about twenty five, twenty six thousand. So mm. if you put a monkey in that constituency with a blue rosette, it would still win. And he knows that. But I think... His constituency association will say, no more, out. They'll, they'll force him to step down. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because although he says, it, it, we say, we, we're saying here that his career his, as a politician is over because he's not in the cabinet. Mm. He is still, still employed MP. to be an MP to represent yeah. his constituency. He is. He and is. It's, a, it's really offensive, isn't it? And he's it? being paid £84,000 a year. Which is a MP. lot of money. A lot of money, particularly for people struggling with the cost of mm-hmm. living and can't mm-hmm. worry about putting on mm-hmm. the heating. I think he should be compelled to give up every portion of his parliamentary salary while he's in the jungle and he should give it every penny of that to a covid charity well well in fact he's he is he has said that he's going to donate a, a proportion of his i'm a celebrity sal- salary 
Well, that's, um, that's four hundred thousand to to a, his local hospice, but right. he he won't tell us what percentage. No, and I that. doubt he never he I he won't ever will. he won't ever will. will but, he? But, no. but we will be checking. People like me will be checking the Commons Register of Interest because he has to declare it. Now, Nadine Doris got into trouble over this when she was in the jungle, and she Tory MP was voted mm. out first, mm. but mm. there wasn't the fuss because she wasn't very well known. Um, she got into all sorts of trouble for forgetting to declare the payment. We ain't going to let Mr. Handel forget <laughs> no, to declare the payment. No, There's no, no chance of that. Not with you around, no, Andrew. <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> so, so there was this kind of bromance brewing between Sean Walsh and mm. Matt Hancock, and obviously they're in, you know, their own separate little camp. Yeah. That, that I'm not sure the others actually know about. I don't think they, they don't, keep yeah. scurrying off, don't yeah, they, and coming yeah, back. Yeah. So they must, again, I think that's going to cause tensions, isn't it? Yeah. But you wonder, are these two going to stick together or do you think that ha- um, that, that, that Matt Hancock will, will, will sort of end up being ousted by Sean Walsh? I think Sean Walsh, Sean Walsh is a clever boy, isn't mm, he? Funny. Mm, He's got more experience mm. of these sort of things. I think um, if you'd have to put your money on Sean Walsh. By the way, do you know the one I'm really impressed with in that jungle too? Jill Scott. She's clever. Oh, she's wonderful, isn't she? She was so cool in that first challenge when yes. Charlene and her had to literally walk off the edge of a building, which was very high up. And who was the guy who couldn't do Baba it? Babatande. Babatande couldn't do it. Oh, she, Babatande. So Charlene might sort of got there eventually, the walk. She strode up there like she was walking up Bombsgove High Street. But what it was I th- amazing. What I thought was really lovely about her was how she was sort of really sort of coaxing the other, others on. Yes, because and she's a sportswoman. Absolutely, she's a team player. Yeah, and I, th- I really hope she does well in it. She was a real, yes, yeah, she was a very senior member of the England England women's team, and you can tell, can't you, by yeah. the way that she she yeah. is, she's such a good, she's brilliant. I mean, who do you think is going to win? I think earlier, I think she's got a very strong chance, um, but she's not, but she probably isn't a bundle of laughs. Mm. I thought mm. Boy George at the beginning, but I'm not so sure. I'm not sure. What do you think? I think Mike Tindall's going to win it. My, well, if I had to put money on it now, um, because he's funny, he's blokish, and he's going to have some cracking tales, you know. He's not going to be indiscreet about the Queen, but um, if he talk, opens up, for instance, about. Prince Philip's funeral. Now that was in a worldwide event. The poor Queen sat all on her own. He was there because of Hancock's restrictions, which were stupid, by the way, stupid. And we, they, we that would be a very interesting conversation, don't you Wouldn't think? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't, and, and, I, and, that's, I, and that's all in the public domain, so he's not breaking any confidences. And I'd be amazed if he doesn't talk about that. Well, given his reaction last night, the, yes. the B word that he used, which yeah. we're not allowed to say here, and when I nobody's would... ever going to forget that moving image of the Queen alone the death of her husband no. and it was it was so moving wasn't it oh gosh God. i mean no one will ever forget no. that forget forget that scene one of the they? enduring images so if i'd be amazed if tindall mike tindall doesn't open up about that and he will to look t- uh hancock directly now and say what was the point mate when you broke the rules well i mean i, I mean I, chris moyles didn't seem exactly over the moon no. with him either did and he we shouldn't forget as well that the night before the queen's Prince Philip's funeral, there was a big booze up party in Downey Street. Now, and Matt Hancock wasn't there, but he was part of the same government that enforced those rules. That's why he's in so much more trouble than he realises. So, so, so Matt Hancock has got no idea, has he, what's no. going on back here? No. Um, however, I mean, Christine Hamilton was, was on the other day and she was talking about when she was in the jungle, Tara Palmer Tompkinson. God bless her, um, was was there and she couldn't survive without cigarettes. Of course. So she was given them and it caused uproar. They went on strike because Tara was allowed her, her yeah. treat, if you like. Yeah. Now, Matt Hancock is allowed to contact people in his constituency if there is an emergency. It's Therefore, he has, he has access to a phone or computer if he really needs it. Now, I'm not sure what the parameters of that are, but when the others find out about that, that's surely that's get, another uh, reason, uh, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> that's why Sean, Sean, you know, Sean will, will come out so much better on that. Are they allowed to have a... Can they have a glass of wine or a beer in the jungle? Are they allowed to have a drink? Um, I think only as a treat. Right. I mean, we saw last night they were allowed a cup of tea, weren't they, and yeah. a Bakewell yeah. tart. Yeah. I mean, they, they are, if if they win it, if they win enough of right. the... If they tasks. stars and things. They, he, he didn't so. even get many stars, did he? Well, no. I mean, that's. Did you hear them say they got five, five six, or six, five or six, I think, and, yeah. and and they were like, oh, well, let's not tell the others that we could have got eleven. <laughs> but the others will know. They'll find out. I think they then did confess. I know. Um, so Andrew. Yeah. 
Matt Hancock and his fellow contestants will be taking on a variety of challenges through the series, some of the most notorious being eating ones. Oh, yeah, with all those awful bugs they have to eat. I know, Are well, well, we wondered if you'd like to oh, try a bug. No, We've got some crunchy think... dried crickets here. Have a go, go on, try them. Are you sure they're dried crickets? Well, they they're look definitely, pretty they're, rank, Well, they're not they? moving. I'm, they I, look a bit like Cocoa Pops from here. <laughs> I don't like Cocoa Pops either. <laughs> right, how many have I got to eat? Like, I'm going to a eat handful. That, a handful? Okay, a that's bit... quite a small handful. Right. Whose idea was this? <laughs> I think it was our producer's idea. Right. It certainly wasn't mine. Yes, the, who, the producer, <laughs> by the way, is going to be um, subjected to uh, something similar. <gasps> well, there's a lot left. There's a lot left. Right, here we go. I'm going to do it all in one go. Do we know how horrible they're going to taste? I don't know. I haven't tried them. Go on. Oh, it's not looking good. Mmm. Not very nice. Are they not? Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> I think that bowl's going to be there for a very long time. <laughs> now, are you having some too? Oh, do I have I to? Think you are. Oh, no. That's, and that you was... made me have quite a big that handful. Will, um, so I have to have a big handful too? You do. And no spitting them out. Okay. Well, no. We, we, you get a star. Do that. I get a star for that? Yeah, so I see. Do I have, did you put them all in at the I same did. time? I did. It's the only way to do it. Okay. Gross, isn't mm. it? Mm. They are gross, aren't mm. they? But imagine, mm. but imagine that, though, Katie, being mm. filmed mm. on national television and you're covered in muck. Mm. They're not nice, are they? Mm. I know. You start to wonder, don't you, is it really worth it? I, I mean, Matt Hancock must really need that money, mustn't he? I suppose he? for £400,000, I probably could do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, what I'm really intrigued about now is the reception he's going to get when he comes out. Depends how long he, how long he, he lasts. It doesn't matter, though, does no. it? When he flies back to the UK... Yep, first class, of course. I mean, I understand he's got a big um, party for his launch party for his book... A few right. days after he lands. Right. So I expect he'll be gearing himself up for that, won't well, he? Well, the last book, you wrote a book 10 years ago. I checked, I'm going to do this in the column. It went so well, he had to declare his royalties £411. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably another reason he's gone on the jungle, hasn't it? So he can sell a few more books exactly. this time. <laughs> well, it, might, it might help because he needs something. Thank you so much for coming, Well, it's a Andrew. joy to be on. Please come back. And if he's here this time next week, get me oh, back, get course. me on again. Yeah,